Hello everybody. Silence in court. So I've been asked to do six, two six minute speeches. I can do four if need be. I talk a lot. And I will use my timer. So my first speech is going to be about um, the Antibes rally, which I'm about to do. I like rallies. <laughs> the Antibes rally. Um, now the Antibes rally, as you all know, is part of the French rally championship. It is the fifth round. And um, I leave on Sunday, and I will return, if I survive, ten days later. Tiens. Faut tirer dessus. I thought I'd tell you a little bit about how rallying is structured, uh, what it involves on the part of somebody who is actually competing in a rally, and then maybe a bit more about the preparation of the vehicle. So, rallying, as you may or may not know, is completely different in nature from circuit racing. So the two big strands of motorsport are rallying and circuit racing. Circuit racing is around a circuit, as the name implies, such as Spa-Francorchamps in Belgium, which is universally recognised to be the second best circuit in the world, after the German Nürburgring. Uh, and rallying, the specificity of rallying is it takes place on public roads. And if you go back to the history of rallying, which started in the 1930s, it was always fundamental that the cars be based on cars that you can buy, road cars. So they are extrapolations of normal road vehicles, which is why a rally car has to be road legal and road registered. <clears throat> and we'll come to one of the reasons for that in a second. Um, the traditions go back a long way, and but rallying has evolved a hell of a lot. Um, the, the high point of rallying was in the 1980s, when they brought in um, the regulations which were called Group B regulations, which meant that the manufacturers could produce a, a very small series of cars, and the cars could be basically rally cars coming off the production line rather than modified ordinary cars. And these cars had about 600 horsepower, and they weighed about um, 850 kilos. Um, to give you an idea of what that means as regards the power-to-weight ratio, uh, if you think of a car like a Ferrari, a Ferrari will have about 450 or 500 horsepower now, and it will weigh about 1.5 tonnes. So you can see that the power-to-weight ratio is completely different. Another very important thing to note about rally cars is that the top speed is not very important. Everybody always asks me, how fast does the car go? And I don't actually know because I, I don't look. When you're rallying, you haven't got time to look at the speedometer and you're looking at the road. But basically, a rally car, you fit a special gearbox, which means that the rally car will not do more than about 110 miles an hour because top speed is not important. What's important is speed uh, in slow bends because the roads we use are very tortuous roads, very twisty roads, which is why I'm going down all the way down to Antibes, which is a long way to take the car on a trailer. Um, it's a 12-hour journey with the car on a trailer because the roads are so fantastic. <clears throat> anyway, to come back to what I was saying, the high point of rallying was the Group B um, category in the 1980s. There were too many deaths of, of, of drivers in Group B because the cars, there were no real safety regulations and they used a lot of magnesium uh, because magnesium is light. Um, they hadn't got carbon fibre in those days, which is what they use these days, but magnesium is light but extremely flammable. So what would happen is the cars had turbochargers, usually two turbochargers, and these turbochargers run red hot. Um, typically the, the, the impeller, which is the, the, the propeller inside the turbocharger, will run at about 120,000 revolutions per minute. So it gets extremely hot because you may or may not be aware that a, a normal car engine will go to a maximum of about 6,000 revolutions per minute. So it generates a lot of heat. And when these cars crashed, as they frequently did, because they were going so fast, um, they tended to explode because the drivers were sitting on the fuel tanks. Uh, there was a lot of magnesium. The turbocharger was red hot. The engine was in the middle of the car to have optimum weight distribution. And they exploded. And people died. Lots of people died. And the... the um, International Motorsport Federation, the FIA, which governs motorsport internationally, decided it was too dangerous. It didn't look good uh, as regards public relations, which is true. And so they, they, they stopped that form of rallying. And rally cars now are only just coming back now, 30 years later, to the same speed that they achieved in the late 1980s. 
<clears throat> so, I have two minutes left for this part of the speech. It's true with me, you get more words per minute, so you're, it's probably like a longer than a six minute speech. Let me tell you a little bit about the Antibes Rally. Now, the Antibes Rally uh, is a very famous rally. It's been in existence for 60 years. And it, all the rallying takes place in the Alpes Maritimes, the roads in the hinterland behind Antibes. So why it's called the Antibes Rally, we don't rally in Antibes because Antibes is a tourist resort with tiny streets and lots of Russian mega yachts. So you don't rally there. But the rally is based in Antibes and every day of the rally we will drive into the mountains about an hour's drive away to pursue our um, rallying pursuit. Um, the rally lasts for three days, and the timing is as follows. Um, we'll be leaving on Sunday. Uh, my mechanics will pick up the rally car, and they will take it on a trailer behind their van. I have a team. And they will drive the car down to Antibes, and I will drive down with Julia in my car, which I use for practicing. So we arrive on Monday. Tuesday is a free day. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday are days devoted to what's called wrecking. Wrecking is reconnaissance of the route, and that's six minutes, so maybe we should stop there, and I'll continue with wrecking afterwards. Wednesday. The vitesse that doesn't pass or doesn't pass the 110 miles? That doesn't pass. That doesn't pass. That means, in fact, 110 miles per hour? 170. 170. Okay. So, I have another six minutes, apparently, or maybe... Let me put my clock on. I could talk for hours about rallying because I've been doing it since I was 20 years old, which is a long time. <laughs> In fact, when I, go, when I go to rallies now, they always think that I must be the father of the driver. And they say, <laughs> so they say, where's the driver? I say, well, the driver's me. Because most people, by the time they get to my age, have given up. They retire. But I'm still going. We shall see. I love it. Um, in fact, there's a phrase by, I've been discussing this recently with another, another student who, who was worried about my, my fate in the rallying. I said, well, Ayrton Senna, you may have heard of, Ayrton Senna, Ayrton Senna, who was perhaps the greatest Formula One driver of all time. He was Brazilian and who died uh, at the um, Monza circuit in 1991 at the wheel of his Formula One car. He said, um, racing is life. Everything else is just waiting. <laughs> And so there's a bit to it, because people ask, ask me why I do it, and it's almost impossible to explain. It's partly the idea of going beyond your limits, facing your fears. Uh, it's partly just the atavistic uh, enjoyment of going fast, that men probably understand better than some ladies do. Um, although, I don't know, I mean, it seems to be it seems, it seems more masculine thing than a feminine thing. I mean, I, I know women drivers, not very many, quite frankly. Although my, my co-driver, who's a woman, when, 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 the faster we go, the more she giggles. She loves it. So she, so she must like the speed. Anyway, and there's also the, the, the technical challenge, rather like being in the booth. Um, I find that with interpreting, even if the meeting is boring, there's still interest in the technical challenge of interpreting it correctly. And in rallying, the challenge of, of mastering a car which is beyond its limits of adhesion is technically challenging and technically interesting. And it's, it, it's very... Um, enjoyable when you actually manage to side the car around a bend and control it perfectly and not crash, basically. But to come back to what I was saying before um, the, the break, I was going to talk to you about the actual timing of a typical um, European or French championship rally, such as the Raid Antibes. So I was saying there were two days devoted to reconnaissance. Now reconnaissance is very important in rallying, because what you do is you, you are given uh, the, the route of the rally, and the route is divided into two sorts of of road. There's the open sections, which are called link sections, uh, which get you from one timed section to another. And on those sections, you have to obey the rules of the road and drive normally, in theory. Uh, and the only time constraint there is you have to actually arrive at the beginning of the next time section at a certain time. That's, that's the only real constraint. Uh, and so the rallying is all about the time sections, where the roads are closed to the public. Um, Every junction is manned by a policeman or, or a, um, a volunteer uh, marshal. And every single junction has to be manned, obviously. There are ambulances and doctors at every stage. And the stages, this is what they're called, the time sections are called special stages. And the special stages um, vary in length from about, in Antibes, for example, the shortest one is three and a half kilometres. 
and the longest one is 35 kilometres. Now, because the roads are so, are so sinuous and so bendy and so tight, um, the average speed on these roads will be somewhere around 100 kilometres per hour. Uh, that will be the average speed, which means that if you're doing a 30 or 35 kilometre special stage, you'll be actually concentrating even more than in the booth um, for around half an hour. It's actually interesting that the maximum time you tend to drive uh, in one go in a rally is 30 minutes, just like in the booth. The difference between the booth and rallying is that uh, if, you <coughs> are, if you lose concentration for a, a couple of seconds in the booth, you might miss an idea. You might even possibly get fired if it's really bad, but in rallying you might die. And that's one of the reasons why rally drivers tend to be very... I'm not sure this is recording, Caspar. Mm-hmm. I was saying, um, in fact, what was I saying? So rally drivers tend to be... Thank you. We tend to be rather scornful of circuit racing drivers because circuit racers, they go round and round and round and they know every single millimetre of the track. If it rains, they stop. Um, they don't race in the dark. And the circuits are very carefully checked and controlled to make sure that if you, they have run-off areas where you can safely leave the track and not die. Whereas in rallying, um, especially in the Antibes rally, there'll be a, a precipice on one side with a 300-foot drop and a rock face on the other side uh, and a tree in between. So there, if you go off the road, there's a good chance you'll die. Um, what kills rally drivers... Don't tell Julia this, by the way. What kills rally drivers most are trees, because trees don't move. I, I, I have hit houses in the past, and the house has collapsed, so brick walls and houses will tend to move slightly, but trees do not move. If you hit a tree sideways, that will tend to kill people. Um, so there's been a lot of work recently in the last 10 or 15 years done on rally cars to, keep, to make them as safe as possible, um, even though, of course, we all know that absolute safety is not possible at all. So to come back to the timing of the rally, Wednesday and Thursday will be voted about 12 hours per day to reconnaissance. And there we drive at road speeds, at normal speeds, and I dictate what are called pace notes to the co-driver. Pace notes are notes where you indicate the um, severity of the bend, you indicate whether the road's bumpy or flat, you indicate the quality of the tarmac, or if it's not tarmac, the quality of the road surface, you indicate whether you can drop one or two wheels off the side of the road, maybe into the gutter or or, or, or on the grass next to the road, uh, which is called cutting a corner. Because the whole idea is, is to straight line the corners as far as you can. Because if you can turn a corner into a straight line, you can go much faster. And so, and if, there, if, there, if there's a crest, for example, you can't see beyond the crest. With your pace notes, you know what's beyond the crest, so you don't lift off. And it's always quite exciting when you come to a completely blind crest at 110 miles an hour, and you just don't lift off, you carry on, because you can't see a damn thing. Because everything, all your instincts are shouting, break, break! But you know you don't have to, because you have notes telling you that there's no need to. <coughs> Which is why, in fact, rallying, another attraction of rallying is the team side of it. Because my life is totally in the hands of my co-driver, and her life is totally in my hands. If I make a mistake, we crash and we possibly die. If she makes a mistake with the pace notes and tells me the wrong note at the wrong time, we crash and possibly die. So it's a very uh, intense experience uh, uh, between the co-driver and the driver as well. That's seven minutes, I better stop. I can go on for hours about this. <laughs>